There is a big difference between this and this, but it's not on the time and effort required. By the end of this video you will know the 7 things you can do to make your animations and comic panels look professional and to develop your own coloring style. We bring you tonight's exciting story. Cell Shading Cell shading is a style that emulates how artists would grab a transparent sheet called a cell and then trace the animator's drawing using ink. Other artists would then flip these cells and fill in each of the character's colors, painting flat shapes with well-defined edges. To this day, this look is one of the most used methods to color a production, no matter the budget or the time frame. But there's so much more to it than just flats. To me, this is an opportunity of using color as a character in your story. Trust me, sometimes color can speak louder than the characters themselves. I'll be using Clip Studio, but everything we're about to see applies to Photoshop or any other illustration software. I will be shading this drawing of my OC Seraphine on a train car. We'll talk about the background later in the video. For now, let's focus on the character. I'll start with a line art pass, cleaning up my sketch just like you would. Once I have this, let's fill the entire character with a flat color that I will be using as a selection. The way I prefer doing things is by using the Auto Select tool, set it to Refer to All Layers, and then make a selection outside of the line art. Then reverse the selection by clicking in the Select menu, going to Invert Selected Area. And now you can just fill in the color in a new layer. Then we can move on to Color Flats. We are not thinking of a light source yet, just the literal colors each part has. These are the settings I recommend. We will always have to go back and polish these shapes a bit by lowering the line art's opacity and filling the parts left unpainted. We can go to our base color layer and click on the thumbnail by holding the control key to make a selection that will help us avoid spilling the color outside of the character. We can push this a little further by adding some shadows and highlights to give more volume to our character. I recommend using a hard-edged line to delimit them in animation. That way you can do this on every keyframe and look at how it moves before actually painting it. If it's just one image, then you can just straight up paint them. This is where a lot of animators and comic artists end their process. Now this is where the real fun begins. Secret 1. Integration Pass In the real world, light is always bouncing around, contaminating every color with the other colors in its surrounding space. The way we are going to emulate this bounce light is by duplicating our flats, rasterize it into a single layer, and then click on this button to colorize it. We'll select a color that matches the ambient that the character is in, so for now a brownish orange, and we will set the blending mode to multiply. Now if this was an animation, what we would colorize is the entire animation folder where the colors are in. But man, why colorizing the local colors when you can just throw a flat color on top to do the same thing? The problem with this is it's missing the value information, which is how bright or how dark a color hue actually is. Basically, if you use a single flat color, both your bright colors and your darker colors will lose its punch. Now we will lower the opacity of this layer and you can immediately feel how the character is in this location. That's the power of integration. I also threw the entire character inside a folder and I will click the button to create a layer mask, lower its opacity and delete everything that's supposed to be behind the armrest. Secret 2. Use gradient. Normally when artists think about gradients, they think of painting on top of the entire thing. We're gonna focus on the character. Using a multiply mode to make things darker, I will start painting on top of the character with a soft edge brush. I'm not painting with a full opacity, but rather really softly on top of it. You will see that the multiplied mode will help us darken things. And look at how just by adding some shadow, and now by making a new layer with an add blending mode and starting to add highlights to it, suddenly it feels much more realistic and it took less than 30 seconds. In an animation, you would create the layers on top of the animation folder and use the clip to the layer below button, so this is painted on top of the entire animation. Speaking of blending modes, I truly feel every digital artist should understand what each blending mode does, and there's a very easy way to do that. Clip Studio Paint has an online instruction manual. If you are using any other illustration software, do not fret, as the same process applies to their blending modes. You can see the text explains what the blending mode is doing, and then you can see an example with RGB colors and different sets of values. 
Just by reading it one time, you will learn so much that you will be able to apply it for the rest of your art career. Secret 3. Fade in shadows and highlights. From this point onward, I'll start challenging what you think a cel-shaded pipeline should be. Even though the shadows and highlights are flat shapes, they don't need to be a single opacity all the way. With the layer mask button, we'll start subtly erasing both parts of the shadows and the highlights. But hear me out, you don't ever want the hard edge border to disappear, otherwise it will look awful. But you can lower the opacity of certain parts, and suddenly it gives the shading so much more depth. Again, when doing an animation, you would take the entire animation folder when you painted the shadows, create a layer mask, and slightly erase parts of it. Now I will paint some highlights on top of the eyes. And when I turn everything off and disable the masks that we painted on the highlights and shadows, this is what most artists use when they are doing cell shading, it is not bad again. But when we turn everything that we just did back on, this is what happens. I think you are aware at this point at how much more value we're adding to the shot. Okay, let's start playing with different lighting scenarios. Which brings us to Secret 4, Volumetric versus Flat Shading. Shadows and highlights do not need to be volumetric. I know this sounds insane, but hear me out. For now, we'll just go into a sunset lighting. I will leave what I did to the background for the end of the video. Now remember the base that we painted? And set it on top of the character. Let's colorize it by clicking Ctrl plus U to a more reddish color. What we want to create is a highlight. For this, I will duplicate this same layer and one of them I will offset. Ctrl click on the thumbnail to make a selection and go back to the first one, the one we didn't offset and just press the delete key. And now this one, if I turn it to an add blending mode, you can see we just created a highlight. This is what I would call a lazy rim light and it doesn't really work in every case, only when the light is coming from the side or from the back. But I have used it to illuminate entire scenes without having to draw a single highlight as we will see in our next video where we will dive deep into post-production for animation. But for you animators out there, consider this video as part one of the post-production video. For comic and webtoon artists, you are in the right place, I will explain everything you need right here. Now let's duplicate this highlight and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. What we're trying to make is the colors bleed a little bit to make the highlight more pleasing to the eye. One thing that I love is by having it on top of the line art, it is also changing the color of the line art. I will do the same thing as in last step and start masking out certain parts of the highlights. But I want you to notice that it's really not following the volume of the character, yet it works perfectly. Highlights just need to sell the illusion of where the light source is. Just like highlights don't need to be accurate, shadows only need to sell the illusion of the volume of the character. You can basically just throw a couple of lines on top of the character and then paint a little bit of glow in the middle and do the same thing to the shadows where we erase a bit of them. And look at how well this lighting is working even though it makes absolutely no sense. I am not trying to make this volumetric at all and it works perfectly. And if you're thinking this will not work in animation, we've talked about this in our character rotation video. It absolutely does. Because the volume information in animation does not come from the lighting, it comes from the animation. I'm just gonna rescue the hue of the eyes and place a little highlight in the center. And there we go. Okay, I promised you we were gonna go all out. So let's do it. To get into it, we need to talk about Secret 5. Color is relative. I had the fortune of working as an animator in Lackadaisy. I want to do some fan art of my boy Freckle, so I decided to record the process. And it quickly turned into the type of demo that I'm doing right now. The problem is I decided to place my stupid face on top of the layers, <laughs> making this unusable. Also, the entire thing is in 720p, so let's just give a hand to Manu of the past. The entire process I'm doing is the same exact thing that I just explained, but there are two things that I do want to rescue from this. The first one is it's all in the values. As we mentioned before, we want to have really dark colors and really bright colors in the same image to maximize our range of value. And the second one is that color is relative. If you look at these two examples, you know that Freckle has orange hair. And if you check the color on the shirt, it is the exact same on both. But because of the lighting situation that we have going on, if I color pick on this orange, let's say, 
it is actually the most red you can go on a digital program. And it doesn't feel like it. Again, color is relative to the situation. Let's do the same thing with Seraphine. Like I just mentioned, the first thing I'm gonna do is colorize her, but look at how dark I'm gonna make her. This is again to maximize our values in the scene. And then I will start erasing for where the light is actually gonna be hidden in my character. I will use the same exact pipeline where I'm just erasing certain parts. I will paint with a light blue color on the places where I passed out, just to better help the integration. And then paint a shadow coming from the other side. Obviously I want to rescue her eyes, to not lose focus from the face. This is the same exact process we just used, but just making it more detailed. This is what I mean when saying you can use color and light as a storytelling tool. Let's quickly do another example, but starting from zero without a background. I will just make the light coming from the front, paint shadows that tell us the volume of the character, basically replicate the same thing we've been doing so far. But I want you to see again how much difference painting a gradient on top of the entire character does. Here it goes, whoop, immediately the entire thing changes. Which takes us into Secret 6, Bloom. This is basically quality in a can. In real life it happens because cameras have a very limited range of value, so anything that's beyond the maxed bright value that it can receive will tend to bleed out a little bit, causing a bloom effect. I'm basically going to duplicate everything we have so far by right clicking and going to merge visible into new layer. So it's gonna make a copy of everything we can see turned on right now. I will now go and add a new correction layer and set a tone curve on top of the copy just created. And the way curves work is moving from left to right. It represents the values of the scene, going from absolute darkness to complete white. And by changing the curve, you can basically crush all the dark colors into complete darkness. But then we're gonna have the most bright colors pumped up a little bit. That is why we get this S shape. We're going to merge these two layers to apply this effect. And now I will blur the copy of all the colors and set it to add glow. When I lower its opacity, look at what's happening. We crushed all the dark values so they do not affect the image but all the highlights are basically bleeding a tiny bit. It's just a little extra oomph or warmth that I just love. This is my crutch in shading. Some people use noise for a certain process. For me, it's the bloom effect, the bleeding of white. These are our final results. If you want access to this file, consider checking out my Patreon, where you get access not only to this, but other animation scenes with all Clip Studio and After Effects files, and even exclusive videos that will not be posted on YouTube. Secret 7. It applies to everything. The reason why I left the background for last is you would think that I did something different with it, but I did not. It is the same exact process we've been doing with the character, just on top of the background. We first duplicate the image and colorize it to give it the tint of the situation that we want. Painting highlights with a soft edge brush. To prove the point, I made four different versions of the sunset. All I'm doing is applying the same steps, but thinking differently. And the key to do this is to use reference. You can reference from animated movies, you can reference from photographs. All professional artists use reference. The background I produced by using this prompt in mid-journey. I think there's a lot of value in using AI to generate a base and using it as a step in your process rather than just the final thing. Now this is my cell shading process, but if you want to go all out and fully render a character illustration, then make sure to check out the video that's coming up next. But it doesn't matter anymore. Everyone's learned that it's not a person's color that counts, it's the kind of person they are inside. Think they'll ever learn that lesson in the real world? <laughs> yeah, when humans get as smart as mushrooms, 